Welcome to the Badass Direct Sales Mastery Podcast with your direct sales dom, Jenny Bellinger. Badass Direct Sales Mastery is a podcast for rock star direct sales moms who are determined to make their business kick ass. Jenny will share her knowledge of effective sales and recruiting techniques, tips to get what you want from your business, and will interview direct sales professionals and leaders from various companies. The interviews will give insight to how these rock stars got to where they are and where they plan to grow in the future. And now, the direct sales dom, Jenny Bellinger. Welcome back to another episode of Badass Direct Sales Mastery. I'm your host, your direct sales dom, Jenny Bellinger, helping you whip your business into shape. And today I have with me Sue Coleman. Now, I was lucky enough to meet Sue Coleman. I know you're gonna be shocked. Not in B&I, but on the marketers cruise <laughs> in January of 2024. And we were able to connect and we have continued to stay in touch since then. And we're recording this about six months, literally almost to the day that we met, six months later. And I was like, you know what, girl, you got to be on my show. Let's, let's get you on here because you have some important information. So let me tell you about Sue Coleman. Now, Sue Coleman is based out of Canada, uh, the eastern side of Canada, if I remember correctly. And mm-hmm. she is a network mastery coach at Empowered Networking. She helps to guide entrepreneurs and small business owners to build robust, ethical, professional networks that drive success. She does this through individual and group coaching and workshops. And she is also part of the Selling on the Spot Marketplace online events, which if we get a chance, we'll chat about those too. So Sue, welcome to the show. Thank you, Jenny. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. I am so happy to have you here because in the few months that I've been getting to know you, I was like, my audience needs this information that she has. But how did you get to where you are today? Hmm. Well, (laughs) (laughs) it's always a bit of a story, right? It's a long story. (laughs) (laughs) I've always networked, I guess. Whenever I've needed something or when I've lived abroad, I've always used like the people I meet to move forward and find out how I can get where I need to. And help them get where they need to as well. It's just been a natural come, you know, thing that I do. When I was in real estate for 26 years, that's what I did. In network marketing, that's what I did. It's just always connecting. And I had the good fortune probably 10, 12 years ago to work with an amazing mentor called Donna Messer. And she had a company called Connect Us. And she really drove home the power of palm up networking. Is that when you meet people, you're not looking for what you can get. Is how can you help? Mm-hmm. How can you help them? So it's always just sort of been in my DNA to to help people and move people forward. And so I just realized over COVID, people really kind of lost the art of networking. Yeah, and, you know, they just really people came into entrepreneurship and just thought, okay, I saw you on a Zoom call. I said hello. We had a quick quick chat. I sent you an email. So that's where it's at. It, like, there's no follow up, no nurture, no building of that relationship. And I think that's so critical to really build what I call a prosperity referral network so that everybody benefits and mm. you help other people and it comes back to you. Like, the yeah. law of reciprocity will kick in. Just keep giving of yourself and see how you can help. Oh, yeah. oh, I love that. Oh my gosh. And so, you know, you spent some years couple of decades, almost three as a realtor. And Mm -hmm. now you are a network empowerment coach and also part of the, so how did you move into the, so you kind of briefly addressed what, was there one particular thing that happened that made you go, oh, I need to help people with this networking (laughs) thing? (laughs) Well, a lot of it I found, you know, like when you say yes to friending somebody on Facebook or a connection request. And then suddenly you get verbally vomited on by, this is what I do. This is what I do. Why my staff that? And I'm going, I don't know you. I just said yes to connecting, you know? Yeah. 
let's let's have breakfast you know like <laughs> let's have a chat let's get to know each other let's not like go for gung-ho yeah. it just was driving me crazy and i really noticed that a lot over uh, you know over covid when people were desperate for connection and just really lost the plot on what it's all about it's about building connections it's about not what can i get from you or what can you get from me it's how can we help each other who do we know in our networks mm-hmm. that can help so uh, yeah i just suddenly had this you know i know what i want to be when i grow up moment in the middle mm-hmm. of last year really i've always been a networker but i thought no i really need to step up and step into this and start getting people to understand that you know it's palm up is how can you help what can i give how can i serve um, and then it will come back to you, you know, kind of think yeah. of it like a sunflower. You're in the middle of the sunflower and it's your job to feed those petals, to, you know, to nourish them and to, you know, bring them along. And eventually they'll start popping up seeds in your area. So just keep on, you know, like putting it out there. It's, it's just the only way I can think of explaining oh, it. <laughs> no, that was so good. And some other people had an aha moment in that, too. I loved the analogy of that. That is it's so completely true because, you know, my audience knows that I have been a BNI member for longer than I've had a podcast. I, you know, I've, you know, at the time of this recording, I've, I've been in BNI for 13 and a, almost 13 and a half years. Wow. And it really is when you when you go into it, because, you know, we have the we have our core value of givers game, right? Mm, yeah give to others and then the law of reciprocity, right? Because then others who are in the network who are of that same thing, give back, right? So yeah. you you keep using the, the phrase palm up. So I don't know if that's a Canadian thing, a British thing, because I know you, you've got some background, because obviously if somebody's listening, you don't sound quite Canadian. Um, <laughs> <laughs> there's more story to that. But it is explain what you mean by palm up, because you know, I have what I believe it to be. I want to know what, how, what, how you define that. Well, I think it's just like when you are approaching somebody, it's you, if you've got your hand up, the mm-hmm. palm up, it's like you're giving, like when you're giving to somebody. Yeah. Rather, you know, when you've got your hand the other way up, you're trying to get something, you're trying to get. Yeah. So that's the only way I can, I visualize it is like, you know, like it's palm up. It's how can I help? Yeah. Not what can I get? Like you're trying to grab something. It's just, I'm coming here to share. Like, I mean, if you've got candies or something on your palm, you give it to somebody. If you're trying to give a horse a sugar cue, you just palm up. You try doing it the other way around, you're going to get bit. But, you know, like, <laughs> right. But I, I just, that's the way I just look at it. It's just like coming, how can I help? Like, listen to the other person for what they need. Yeah. Not like, I mean, not for what you're going to say next. It's like, listen to that person. You got two ears for a reason. Mm. You know? And as I say, your ears will never get you into trouble. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> oh, my God. I love that phrase. Your ears will never get you into trouble. Says the chick who has a mouth that has gotten into, <laughs> into a little trouble in the past. Uh, but oh, my gosh. OK, I love that. I love that definition of that, because. Yeah, when you when you are reaching out to help somebody, you know, if you think of every time in a movie when someone's falling off the edge of the cliff or falling off the edge of the building and someone reaches out and says, here, take my hand, their hand is palm up. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And they're they're saying, let me help you. Let me help you. Like, and I wish you guys could see me right now because we're, we're doing <laughs> the actual motions here. Right. Imagine that that person who's standing at the edge of the cliff in a, in safety, reaching out to the person who's slipping and falling and they ha- they have their hand up every time. Let me help you grab my hand, right? Yeah. So, oh, and I would say that was one of the first mindset switches that I had when I first started networking was, mm-hmm. oh, I need to quit trying to sell everybody on my bling. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> I was the jewelry lady. I need yeah. to quit trying to sling the bling and listen and help them because I had somebody in my first chapter who uh, was a contractor and I kept trying to set up a one-to-one with him because I knew that contractors when they're in the home are generally working with 
the woman of the home because she's the one who takes mm-hmm. off work or works from home or she's a yeah. stay at home mom. And so he's interacting. Most contractors are men. I'm not trying to be sexist, but it just makes conversation easier, like, guys. Yeah. Right. He's generally having conversations with the woman of the home. So I was yeah. like, we have the same client. So I kept wanting to meet with him. But in his head, and he told me this later, he didn't understand how he could give a referral to a jewelry lady because he's like, I don't buy jewelry. I don't know. I don't know anybody who does. Like, I'm I'm not going to have a party, right? Yeah. So what I did was I started sending him a ton of referrals to the point where he could not ignore me. Yeah. And I, and so he finally said, oh my gosh, you've sent me like 10 referrals in the past three months. And I'm like, right. Do we have a one-to-one now? Because <laughs> he felt guilty. Yeah. Because I gave first. And he was like, I don't know how to, I don't know how to, you know. And then we were able to sit down, have the one-to-one and I could teach him how to yeah. refer me in that conversation. Right. So it was the give yeah. first. So. Yeah, absolutely. I love that. Oh my gosh. And so. So the giving first and and it's, you know, you said the the covid really took away a lot of people's practice of relationship building and and how to how to do that. They they aren't doing that. So what are you doing with your clients then to help them begin to rebuild that relationship building muscle? Well, I just teach them about. You know, number one, when you go to a networking event, make sure you plan the follow up because you've got to do the follow up. You can't just assume because somebody met you that they're going to do it. So you have to do the follow up. And actually, probably before you go to a network, especially if you're going to an in person one, Mm -hmm. if you have an opportunity to look at the guest list ahead of time, know who you need to talk to. I think it's really important that you know. Number one, who you're looking for as a right fit client for yourself. Mm -hmm. So you want to be able to talk to those people, but also know the industries that, just like you were saying, that could help, you know, with getting some information to somebody or, you know, passing along your information. Identify those people and then make sure you talk to them. And it doesn't need to be everybody at the event, especially in an in person doesn't need right. to be everybody. Just pick two or three people that you really want to connect with so you don't overload yourself, number one, with the follow-up afterwards. Mm-hmm. But also when you are, you know, even on a Zoom call, when you, it's, again, keep your ears open if you have a chance to know who you need to talk to and follow up and then, you know, just try and have a one-on-one and then follow up mm-hmm. and continue to follow up. Nurture that relationship but not have every conversation be, you want to buy my stuff? No, it's just like, oh, you know, just checking in, see how you're doing, how's business going. If you see an article that's a a good fit or something they might be interested, send that to them. You notice somebody graduated from high school on Facebook, send them a note saying, oh, you must be so proud. Like be a human being. Mm Mm-hmm. And then just, you know, every now and then you can have a, a catch up chat or something, but just look for different ways to network or to nurture, I should say, those relationships. It's not all about, you know, let's talk business. It's just like nurture the relationship, treat them as a friend, a human being. Right. Provide value. I mean, be valuable resource in their life. Send them referrals. Just, right. you know, that kind of thing is just. And I find that, yeah, over COVID, people sort of lost the plot because everything was so virtual Mm -hmm. that they didn't think that was kind of necessary. Um, Yeah. And there's so many ways to follow. I mean, there's so, so many ways to follow up nowadays. I mean, it's, you know, technology can really help with that. Do you are there any pieces of technology that you specifically use or systems or processes that you uh, work with your clients on for that follow-up process? Yeah, I mean, I like to use, uh, there's a, a genius product out there called uh, Send Out Cards. Mm. Or prompting. And I love that because I can snag somebody's picture. Of, you know, well, I actually did it <laughs> with my grand dogs. My daughter-in-law posted an amazing picture of them sitting on the doorstep. Now, hmm, 
So I snagged that and I sent the dogs a Christmas card from each other <laughs> just oh. because I could. <laughs> it was the daftest thing, but because I could, I did it on my phone, bing, 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 done. So I use that same thing when I see somebody, you know, with a, a cute picture of their granddaughter graduating from kindergarten. Mm-hmm. And if, you know, I follow them on social media, so I'll snag that picture, send it off to them and say, you must be so proud. It's got, you know, I don't say anything about business. Of course, it's got my brand on the back of it. Yeah. But it's just like, hey, I noticed you. I thought about you. Or if somebody's daughter got married or some, I make a comment on social media. But yeah, I use the send out cards a lot just because it's such a, cards have a 100% open rate. Yeah. Emails don't. <laughs> Amen to that. I mean, I, to to prove your point, right? So. Being in the network marketing industry, I know a lot of people in send out cards, mm. whether whether they're building the business themselves or if they're just a, a customer. And I shouldn't say just or, you know, whether they're yeah, building the business or are a customer of the service. Right. And so I fairly regularly get cards from a variety of people because they're watching what's happening on my Facebook. And then they, you know, so, for example, the very first card was the one that really stood out for me, though, that that I ever got from send out cards because I didn't know it existed. And the realtor who sold, who who listed the house that I ended up buying, okay, he and I ran into each other at a networking event. And he remembered me as being the person, as being part of the couple that bought this house. Yeah. And he found... So he went and found me on Facebook, friend requested me, grabbed my picture, my profile picture at the time. It was it was around July 4th. So I had mm-hmm. red lipstick, a uh, blue necklace and a white top on. So I had my red, white and blue on. And so that was my current profile pic. And he made it the front of the card and said it was really great to run into you at this networking event and not across the closing table. I had forgotten that's how I knew him, (laughs) right? But he remembered, right? And he sent me that card and I had never in my life opened a card and saw my face staring back at me. (laughs) And so it made quite the impression, right? To to do that. And and I'm telling you, for, for send out cards people or for anybody who isn't with them yet or promptings, those moments make... A difference. So I still can tell you that man's name. Yeah. Right. Even though I don't have that card anymore, because I don't need to keep a picture of myself that I have available on Facebook. <laughs> it's fine. But other send out cards, people have sent me pictures of my kids, me and my partner, my cat. You yes. know? And you remember them, right? And it's just, yeah, I did that for a friend with um, her grandchildren live in Japan. So she doesn't see them that often. So she's always scrolling through her photo, her phone. So I went on Facebook and found, you know, pictures and put them on a card, on a big card for her. And I said, now you can just put it on your mantelpiece and you can see them anytime instead of having to scroll through the pictures and stuff. She loved it. And she asked me to send the dad the picture in Japan because it was so cute and stuff. So it, it, it really does make a difference just finding those little ways, a little different to... That's one of the biggest tools I use and and really, yeah. I think Probably. that's super brilliant because it, it's it's very effective because all of the people that I know who have sent me cards, I can name them. Jordan Adler, Candace mm-hmm. Rodarte, uh, Lisa Wilbur have all sent me cards. And then yeah. Brian Vaughn was the was the realtor who sent me my face. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody did that to me and I went, whoa. <laughs> Right. But it's it's it is. It's quite shocking, but it makes an impression in a good way, because now. Hello, people. He sent me that picture back when I was still in jewelry, which means it was more than eight years ago. And you still remember. I still remember his name and the people who send me cards. Now, interestingly enough, the other three people have also been guests on my podcast. (laughs) (laughs) Put your address in the chat and I'll send you a card, too. (laughs) There we go. Exactly. Right. Um, cause who doesn't <laughs> love getting real mail? I mean, yes. it, cause it's a thing, but anyway, so that really does help build the relationship. It's something that connects, even though it, most people don't necessarily see how impactful that is because they're not there when they, when the person is opening the card, yeah. you know, or, it, you know, cause 
there's not just cards. You have other options with promptings as well. They oh, have, you know, brownies. I've, <laughs> I've gotten so many brownies. <laughs> Usually my <laughs> kids end up eating them, so it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, there's other options, cool gifts. And mm-hmm. so if someone has something really cool or if you're like, oh, man, that person seems really down, you can send them a nice little gift. Yeah. Um, and just help boost their spirits um, or celebrate a really cool thing in their life. So that follow-up mm-hmm. piece is super important. And, it, you know, there's there's just such a a, a lost art, like you were saying. It, it yeah. really did get lost in the age of technology because I totally thought you were going to go down a technology. Well, you can do this. No. I mean, yeah. does does send out cards have tech? Yes. Yeah, that makes it easy, but it's it's newfangled tech that is adding to an, an old fashioned, an old school uh, way of doing things, and I I think that's really fantastic. Yeah, it's my favorite one. I mean, I used them when they first came out years ago when I was mm-hmm. in real estate because it was a great thing. It was it was clunky as all get out, but it was great. Now it's it's just such a seamless process, and I just love it. I can just you know see something and within a couple of minutes have a personal message sent to somebody is just wonderful. Yeah, no, I, I agree. And, and networking is a huge topic. It's huge. Right. Mm -hmm. And we have limited time here to talk about things. (laughs) Um, and, and I, and I say this because hello, I've been professionally networking for 13 and a half years and I still learn new tips and and tricks and techniques all the time. And so I'm I'm pointing that out to people. So if you think you're a professional networker, you still have more to learn. There's always more to learn because people. But you have offered a really cool gift for the badass crew to help them improve their networking. So tell me, tell us about the gift that you have for the badass crew. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, so recently I published a book called Networking Your Way to Success. And it has all kinds of um, helpful hints. It has some practical things for you to do to really improve your networking skills. So I would like to offer the badass crew a copy of the ebook. Um, so look at can, them. Yeah. Now, hopefully they'll enjoy that. <laughs> just in case somebody who's listening is like me and wants a physical copy of the book. Is it available on Amazon? Can people get? It's certain, yeah, it's absolutely available on Amazon. Yeah. Fantastic. It's so we'll make... it's available. <laughs> right. Okay. So fant- that's good. Cause in case they're, you know, I think the ebook guys, you can get a book for free. I don't care. It's, it's an ebook. So read it on your phone, read it on your tablet, read it on your computer, have your Kindle read it to you because I think they have voices that read to you now. So you know, you can yeah. turn it into something to listen to. So we put the link to networking. What is it? Networking for success? Networking, networking your, your way your, to su- That's what. Networking, networking your way to success ebook. We have the link in the chat or sorry, not in the chat, in the show notes. Uh, the <laughs> Badass Crew knows how to get to the show notes. But just in case this happens to be your first time listening to Badass Direct Sales Mastery and you're wondering how to get to the show notes, all you have to do is grab your phone, click on today's episode. Now, make sure don't grab your phone if you're driving, please like pull over and then grab your phone. <laughs> click on today's episode, scroll under under Sue's picture and you will see the link to the book the ebook to get it for free. Now, if if you also want the book on Amazon, we will also, I'll get my team to add the Amazon link to Networking Your Way to Success. So that way you guys also have uh, that if you would like to purchase a physical copy of this book. So Sue, this has been fantastic. I want to bring you back so we can dig deeper because I'm going to go get your ebook and I'm going to read it so we can go into any of those additional things. Thank you for helping people begin to see the the importance of networking and building those relationships palm up. I love that phrase. So and and the sunflower analogy, just mm, chef's kiss. <laughs> <laughs> it's my pleasure, Jenny. Thanks for having me on. Absolutely. And we will definitely have you back for sure. All right. So badass crew. You know how this goes. Stay tuned because there's another badass episode on its way. 
Thanks for listening to the Badass Direct Sales Mastery Podcast with your direct sales dom, Jenny Bellinger. Why are you waiting to go to BadassDirectSalesMastery.com? Don't make the dom get her whip. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure to share it with another rock star that you know in direct sales after you subscribe to the podcast so you won't miss any future episodes. You can also check out the show notes for links and any contact information mentioned in today's episode. We'll see you next time.